Hello everyone, uh, this is Arpan and uh, today I'll be taking the meet for Z algorithm. Uh, and uh, then we'll be doing a few questions um, using uh, using prefix array, Z algorithm and the automaton. So first I will talk about the Z algorithm. So just to give you a brief about, uh, okay, just before I continue, I, am I, I am audible, right? Yes, you're audible. Cool, thanks. Uh, yeah, so just to give you a brief about uh, pre prefix function. So uh, generally, uh, prefix function and Z algorithm, uh, like uh, they, are, they do a, pre, pre, a pretty similar job and uh, they can be used uh, al as an alternate of each other. But in certain problems, one might be a bit easier than other to like just just intuitively to solve uh, to solve using uh, z algorithm might be a bit easier but again uh, z algorithm is a pretty interesting algorithm the z z function is a pretty interesting uh, function itself and uh, okay let's go on and so yeah so the prefix function was uh, something like this we used to calculate a lps array longest prefix that is also the suffix so basically the lps i defines that uh, yeah so lps i defines the longest prefix that is also the suffix for the substring defined uh, from 0 to i inclusive so this was what the lps array looked like like uh, as in uh, for example for this uh, uh, yeah. So, this would be what the LPS look like um, for for this thing. So, um, sorry yeah. for this, sorry for interrupting, but we can't see the screen. Oh wait, okay. Is it frozen or something? It was a black screen throughout for me. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it's yeah, visible now. Do tell me if you can't see it. I think there's an issue with my team site. I'm not sure. Uh, it's working. Yeah, it's now. visible now, right? Yeah, yeah, it's visible. So LPS of I was the longest prefix that is also the suffix for string 0 to i and uh, so if this is this is our string uh, this is this is what the lps array would look like and uh, now uh, we and we discussed why uh, why we how we can use the prefix function to uh, find the uh, number of times a uh, pattern S occurs in a string P. Uh, so, it, and this is what the KMP algorithm is. And, uh, like this is just uh, we take the pattern S, we add a hash and T. So, hash is a character which does not occur in the given alphabet set. So, suppose throughout we are talking about this alphabet set A to Z, small a to Z. So now, if we have uh, s hash t uh, and we calculate the prefix, uh, the prefix function that is the LPS array of this, uh, say s is of length m and t is of length n. So, in any position after uh, where where i greater than equal to uh, greater than equal to m plus one, so that would be this the Part was three. Purple stuck, so. I think. Purple stuck. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. Mm, now. 
Yeah, so uh, if we have a string, a pattern S and a text T, we do a S hash T and hash is something outside the given character set. For any I which is greater than uh, M plus one, greater than equal to M plus one, which means that it occurs here in, in the T part. So uh, yeah, so uh, if, if any LPS of I here uh, is equal to M, we know that uh, a, a character uh, the pattern has occurred here at least once. So if if my uh, string here ends at i, so if I get LPS of i equal to m, and uh, with, that means that I have found a pattern uh, which uh, which ends at index i. And I can count the number of times this happens, and I and I find the position and the number of times the pattern occurs in the text. So now uh, let's talk about the z z z array. So z uh, here the z of i is the length of the longest prefix common in zero to n that is in the entire string and from and the sub and the uh, suff uh, suffix string start starting at the uh, starting at the i8 position included. So basically, uh, what the z uh, array here would look like is uh, the f uh, and the first value of the z array is undefined, and it doesn't make sense to find the longest prefix starting here and common. Like it doesn't make sense. Uh, so the zero at position is un is not defined. Uh, from after that, uh, uh, this this would look something like this: b c d three here because a b oh wait sorry not three two yeah so a b is common with a b so uh, starting at this position a b uh, is the longest prefix that is common in the entire string and a B A B D E and zero zero zero. Yeah, so this is what uh, Z array looks like. Uh, Z are pretty similar in uh, like in the way they are defined, but like uh, what I mean by that is like you can actually find a uh, now let's try to solve the original problem of pattern, your voice pattern broke searching. A, your voice broke for a bit. Could you just repeat what you said? Just uh, okay. the, la the last minute, sir. Sorry. Okay. Yeah, sure, sure. Yeah, do tell me if I if I am not able to. Yeah, thanks. Uh, so what I was saying is uh. LPS, LPS and Z array are pretty uh, close, like in the term, in the even in the way they defined, and also in like you can actually convert uh, LPS of I, LPS and Z array uh, in in into each other using uh, an of an uh, However, now we want to solve the original problem of pat of pattern searching in text. Using uh, using Z array, so that means uh, given S and T, uh, we want to find the number of times uh, S occurs in T uh, using Z array. So, do you guys have any idea of how to do this? Like, would you like to pitch? So like initially we start from uh, S0 to N minus one, like uh, we compare it with every SI to N minus one, and then we change mm -hmm. S0 to N minus one to S1 to N minus one, kind of like that. And then oh, we oh, you, you're telling me, uh, you're telling me how to do uh, okay. it. Or are you telling me how to uh, find? 
So basically, what I'm asking is, suppose I I know how to find the ZRA uh, given a string. What I want to do is this pattern pattern searching. So given a text t, I want to find the number of times s occurs in t. Uh, was your algorithm meant for that, or were you giving me uh, how to find t? Uh, count the number of times we have M in the ZRA. Yeah, right. exactly. Uh, so, like, first, the first step will be to con concatenate the strings using S hash T, and uh, then I, I find the ZRA of, of the string, and then uh, in the T part, I look for how many times M occurs in the uh, M occurs in the ZRA. And I would be starting at that position. I have I have a pattern S. Uh, so uh, you you like this is pretty uh, easy to understand. And once we have the Z array, we can we can do this pattern matching. However, how do we actually find this Z array? Um, so it's a it's a what would be the naive algorithm to do this? So basically, uh, I think that. That's what you were saying. I'm not sure, but uh, what we want to do is, given z of i is the longest prefix starting at that position, so start at every position and keep keep comparing uh, i with zero, uh, i plus one, and so on, till, till either I hit n here or it, it doesn't matter. So in of the case, I stop and I just put z of i there. So that is uh, that is the uh, naive way to do it. But as you can see, that this will take me o of n square time because I will start at every position and, and compare. Uh, so I want a smarter way to do this, uh, and I can do it in o of n. So it's not very obvious, so I will go ahead and not give you a chance to think about it. Uh, so the idea lies that uh, if if I have, uh, I will maintain two sets, uh, two variables, L and R, and uh, okay, I will this. Yeah, so I will maintain two sets of uh, two variables, L and R. Um, here, L, uh, L and R is the longest, uh, longest common, uh, longest substring. Uh, no, the the substring which is uh, Arpan, common I think with the screen, the screen is stuck again. Uh-huh. Okay, so uh I don't know why this is happening, but uh I, I guess I'll keep resharing every five minutes in my uh pen Um so uh if I can make two sets of variables, uh and uh, two variables L and R and L and R uh the which is uh, common with the prefix with the maximum r till what I have discovered right now. So what that means is, uh, given uh, given that I have discovered only up to a certain position, uh, l to r, uh, l to r is the is the is the rightmost uh, substring that is common with zero to uh, r min uh, r minus l. So uh, l to r is com is uh, is same as zero to r minus l, and r is the uh, rightmost possible till I have till what I have discovered right now. Uh, 
anything beyond this i have not discovered so this is what i need but uh, like the exact purpose of this will become clear so, in a way so your voice is breaking a lot like for quite a few people i guess okay um uh, i i'll i'll reconnect in a in a minute i just hello yeah uh, like is it better it's still cutting for me i don't know about others uh okay. no i think the voice is better now uh, mm, yeah okay i'll 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 speak for a few minutes and uh, you guys can say uh, again like yeah yeah so uh yeah so uh, what i was saying is l2r uh, is the rightmost substring which is uh, which is uh, also the prefix of uh, this this string and r and beyond r we haven't yet discovered arpan uh, arpan so, it will be better if hmm. you can start this l2r once again like i i didn't get anything from the l2r okay part. okay okay hmm yeah. so l and r are two variables which we which we define right now like uh, i am not uh, telling you the use of this right now and it will become clear in a minute why we need this but l to r is uh, l and r are two variables which we define as like that l to r uh, inclusive is the rightmost substring which is uh, which is also a prefix of this a current m of my entire array and beyond r we don't know what what is there like r is just the right so um yeah that's uh, that's all the definition is right now uh, i will start with the Uh, algorithm exactly, and uh, you will realize why uh, we need L and L. Uh, note that I do not need to calculate the uh, value of of z zero because it's not defined. So uh, I. I go from one to n, and in every iteration, I I I have three cases. So the first case will be where i is less than r. I uh, even i is greater than r, which means I am discovering new new places now. So uh, I knew that l to r is a uh, is a is a right is a rightmost substring common i am i have gone beyond that this is my first case in such a case what i need to do is like, uh, directly like i would in the naive algorithm so uh, 
uh, I, I check zero with each i plus k and something like that. Uh, and now I, I know that this this prefix matches my uh, the uh, the substring start uh, starting at i. So I know that k is my current value of c of i. I mean, it will be the value of c of i. Uh, okay, I'll check if it's okay. Uh, is it cutting or are you able to hear me? Uh, it's like on and off, like it's it works for a while and then the voice again starts breaking and then it again comes back to normal. So mm -hmm. currently it's normal, but I'm like it was not working a while ago. Okay. Uh... So uh, I'll fix my issues next meet, I guess, if if this persists. Uh, so yeah, uh, Z of i is uh, now if I have. Uh, so the screen vanished for me. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, uh, now I guess it should be visible. Uh, yeah, I uh, I is greater than R, and if I is greater than R, then uh, I just do a do what I would do in a naive in a naive case. That is, I compare zero with I, and up to a well up to some I plus K, and and I stop. It's still not visible for me. Uh, I don't know why this is happening and uh, okay I guess I, I'll stop right now I think because I have no way of fixing this uh, okay I can do something I can go for zoom if you want yeah no, that'd be fine cool Okay, so recording has started. Yeah, cool. Uh, so, uh, I I guess you've understood till L L to R. Now, what I will do is I will iterate from uh, one to n. So I I have my uh, original uh, outer loop. So here I iterate from one to n, and uh, I am I am faced with two cases. Uh, at every step, either I can have i is greater than r, which means that I I went beyond my uh, beyond my discovered beyond my discovered uh, uh, area, which means that. Uh, Mm -hmm. uh, I need to see how how uh, uh, I need to reset my LNR. So now I what I will do is I will use the naive algorithm to uh, to to cal uh, to I. And so on till till somehow uh, till this this everything after after i plus k doesn't match k l as i uh, this uh, now I have reset my LNR so this was one case uh, how now I will I will be faced with another case where i is between LNR inclusive so 
in such a case uh, note that i i i am already in the middle of a of the common segment which means that if this is my string and this is l to r yes so if this is l to r uh, and this is 0 to r minus l uh, i i know that l to r is same as 0 to r minus l uh, also is is everything better now as in are you able to hear me and see the screen yeah good so yeah so um, now i know that l to r is same as 0 to r minus l and i want to find at point i what the value of g of i is and uh, and uh, since i am coming uh, coming in a linear linear manner g of, i have calculated g of i for or g of j for everything less than i now uh, note that since this thing l this thing l to r and 0 to r minus l is the same i i have a point here which is uh, i i minus l so at this point everything beyond i minus l is also same as everything beyond i till r so these two strings are again the same which means that if i want to calculate g of i when i when i am trying to calculate g of i a part of a part of my uh, of my g of i will fall inside here like it can go beyond or it can stay here so uh, now i will what i what i need to do is find a estimate for g of i using g of i minus l if i calculate g of i minus l uh, i am again faced with two cases so i, I all i do right now is uh, see what g of i minus l is so if g of i minus l turns out to be uh, say this uh, i call this value x so if x is uh, less than r minus uh, i plus 1 which is it is less than this entire thing uh, it ends before this last value so it's it's my g of i minus l Explain this part again. That X less than I minus I plus one. Uh, our uh, our value here at z of uh, I would would be the same as z of I minus. Arpan, your voice is again. breaking and i think you just disconnected so what yeah hmm. yeah the internet connection is probably poor yeah i think he also doesn't know that he has been disconnected Oh, I think I disconnected. Yep. <laughs> uh, can you make me uh the host again? Yeah, one minute.
Mm, yeah. So basically, if I have um, if my z of i minus l that is x is less than r minus i plus one, it means that uh, any uh, z of the uh, the string which is common lies before this point. So it lies somewhere till here. And uh, I guess it's a, getting a bit untidy, but uh, so if this was my original string, uh, if, uh, I have x values here, which is common with uh, x values. Here. So that is what z of i minus l being less than i minus i would be, r minus i plus one would mean. And uh, and that means that uh, uh, if I want to compute z of i here, uh, that would mean that uh, anything beyond this does not match with and uh, does not match with x plus one. So, and the same condition ex exactly holds for uh, z of i. So this. Uh, so the value of z of i would be exactly same as z of i minus l. Uh, say world, then a, a value that matches here would have to match here too, and we would reach a contradiction. So uh, it's a bit confusing, but uh, once you uh, actually uh, try, try uh, like sit and try it with an example, you will you will realize that why this exactly makes sense. But uh, yeah, so we have another case, x is greater than or equal to uh, r minus i plus one. And what that means is that I have a string. Uh, okay, is my voice cutting too, again? It's clear now. Okay. Uh, so if I have x greater than r minus uh, i plus one, which means that I have a string which goes beyond the part I have in common with this string. So the, uh, it's like uh, this, this part of the string is not same as this part of the string. So I cannot say that z of i is same as z of i minus l in this case, because everything beyond is unknown to me. So what I will do here is I will set z of i equal to r minus i plus one and I will apply the naive algorithm uh, after this, which means that uh, basically I have I have this entire string which was initially common to me. Uh, uh, same like this is exactly same as this, but beyond this, I don't know well, uh, beyond this, I don't know if it matches with the original prefix. So after after uh, after r minus after this r i have to iterate so i will compare again r plus 1 with uh, this uh, initial uh, r plus i min r plus r minus i plus 2 and so on oh no sorry sorry, sorry. Uh, x plus 1 and so on so so this is I again apply the naive algorithm to compute how long my uh, how long further is my original string equal to the prefix, and I again reset my uh, l equal to i and r equal to uh, whatever point I hit. So I I I have now again reset my l and r to go beyond uh, i. Uh, so I, I think this is a bit confusing, but uh, uh, this is the gist of the algorithm and uh, you will have to give it a, a, at least one read to get, get it completely clear. Uh, yeah, and uh, so the proof of why this works in O of N, uh, I'll reshare my screen to show VS Code.
I guess VS Code should be visible right now. It's visible. Cool. Yeah. So this is what the Z. Uh, this is what the Z function looks like. Uh, and or uh, like here they have condensed this code into like uh, small functions. So. Uh, it, it basically if you all all the conditions will be there. I I is less than uh, R, then I do the minimum thing, and actually the EP algorithm score. So they have uh, shortened it a lot, uh, but the idea remains the same. However, uh, if you see carefully, there are two loops, and you you might want to question why. Uh, why this is not O of n square, and the answer to that is that in every every iteration of the while loop, I will always I will always increment my R. So when do I use the while loop? Either I is already greater than R, or uh, I or my current match goes beyond the uh, L to R. So in both the cases, I will always increment. So the R always uh, remains the same or increments, which means the while while loop will run for as as high as R can go, which is N. and I know that my initial initial uh, the outer loop only goes till N. So I am for, I am for sure uh, bound to finish this with, uh, within around two N step, steps. Which again is O of n. So this is what the z function looks like. Uh, like this is how we calculate the z function. And uh, now, uh, now I I will come back to uh, uh, come back for an example in the end. Uh, come in through through the through a problem. But first I'll cover. Uh, uh, first I'll cover uh, auto, uh, the automaton for prefix. Prefix function. Yeah. Uh, also, is everything better right now, or uh, or should I stop at this point and continue later? It's it's not been lagging for some time now. After you rejoined, everything is fine. Okay, fine. Good. Uh, so. Now I will uh, talk about what an automaton, a prefix function, what an automaton is in short. So, if you if you have an any idea about automata, which will, which will be a which is a course in second year, and you you need not, but uh, if you have any idea, you will you will understand why this is called an automata. But uh, you don't need need it exactly. So in an automaton, all you have is you have states. So you suppose I have states x0, x1, to uh, xn, and each of these states defines a. I mean, it's it's just like a DP state. It's it's a state of your uh, function, a state of your uh, function at that point. So uh, now, what an automaton is is that. I I can go from one state to another using some action. So I can go zero to x one and uh, x x x one to x two and so on. And I mean it, it can go anywhere. As in I need not go to consecutive states. And uh, it can go to multiple places using multiple actions. And I, I will tell you exactly in what context this uh, this is this is used. So basically, what I want to do is or uh, automaton of uh, I C is uh, is uh, suppose that is equal to uh, J. Automaton of I C equal to J implies that. Uh, I can I go from state i to state j using input c. 
now a, a brief uh, a brief motivation for why we need automaton so uh, remember that while we when we were using uh, kmp uh, when we were doing kmp algorithm for uh, using the prefix function we did s hash t and we computed the uh, prefix uh, the prefix function for the entire uh, entire thing s hash t and uh, And found how many times M occurs in the array. What I what I want to do now is like I don't always have T as a whole. Suppose T is a stream of input, which means that I get T of zero, then I get T of one, and up to up to any point like T of infinity, say. So suppose it's like an online. Online algorithm, which means that at every point t of i, I might have to answer how many times the pattern has occurred till now. So, in such a case, it's obviously not feasible for me at every step to store whatever I have as s hash t and then recalculate the prefix function. So, uh, it makes sense for us to have something like this state. and what automaton i uh, what this state here means is that suppose i am at state xi that would mean that uh, from our original pattern s i characters have matched till now so x uh, being at state x means i have i characters which have matched uh, with uh, with the s like from the beginning uh, that is the uh, i characters in the prefix of s have matched my last uh, i characters i received in this string so uh, now uh, going from xi to xj uh, using c means that uh, given that i i have matched i characters use uh, when i get an input of c i mean this is not uh, this is not the character c this is some some character c uh, i i go to uh, j characters match so uh, let's take an example here a b c a b uh, suppose this is our uh, pattern and now we are given a stream of inputs so initially i uh, i have zero characters match i get an a so getting an a would mean i i have one character match again getting a b would mean i have two characters which have match i get a again it means that everything is reset and i have again one character match so this is state 0 state 1 state 2 state 1 again and uh, yeah so now uh, again so this is what being in state i means that i have i characters which have matched with my pattern and how exactly to construct it uh, you will remember that uh, this is this is what our, this is what a prefix prefix function looked like i mean uh, this is what our prefix function did essentially is that it calculated how many characters i have matched uh, from the prefix so what my uh, what my prefix function would look uh, what my uh, how to calculate this uh, automaton would look like is that i i go through uh, go through each each of the if each of the positions here and see whether the next character is matching or not uh, i i'll pull out my share yeah so i i will use this code to explain uh now this this is the simple way to do it. So i go through each uh 
each each uh, each uh, each character in the pattern uh, and for every possible input that is 0 to 26 here 0 to 25 here uh, i see uh, i see whether i can uh, whether i can go whether my next character matches or not so i'll share my entire screen yeah so uh, if uh, now at every point i will see whether after i my uh, my character matches with uh, my my character sieve here matches with the next character in this position so then i just uh, then i just assign it to be uh, the the value like if i am at abc and i get a and it matches with this a then i can just make the uh, make uh, automaton of uh, 2 a as 4 so that would mean that uh, i uh, i went to the next character however if it does not match what i have to do is i i keep on reducing my uh, reducing my uh, number of character uh, number of characters matched so uh, remember that uh, our pi of j minus 1 means that the lps lps here so lps of j minus 1 represents the next largest number of characters in in uh, in my um, so in my in my substring which matched uh, which matched both in the prefix and the suffix so uh, j equal to uh, this just reduces the number of times uh, we are calculating so it's just like in the lps array lps array creation so if it was ab ab uh, c b a b if we had got to this point and lps of uh, this point okay so uh, yeah, however what is the next largest number of characters i can match two like lps of uh, lps of 4 minus 1 lps of 3 that is this point is two and uh, what i have done by doing this operation is that i get the next largest number of characters which can match and that means that i have i can also match ab so basically what this means is suppose after this there was a uh, if i if i have ab a uh, if i have my initial estimation which is 4 uh, this c does not match with a but if i do uh, lps of uh, lps of uh, j uh, j equal to j minus 1 uh, i i get to get to this point and again my a matches with this so it's just reducing my number of number of times i do this uh, number of, uh, it just reduces the <laughs> yeah it just reduces my uh, expectation from the largest substring uh, now uh, i Until till I have a match or I reach zero, and then I uh, set my automaton of I C as J. So, and uh, this is the non uh, non ideal way of doing it, and we can improve this using D P. That we know that automaton we have calculated automaton for every everything before this, so. Uh, automaton of uh, automate. Uh, all we need to do after this point is go go to the next uh, next possible uh, next closest estimation and and assign whatever we had assigned then. Uh, there will there would be any no difference. So automaton of I C is same as uh, is equal to 
pi i minus one p if it does not match. So yeah, so basically, if, when we were doing this operation, we got that we we would have done the exact same thing for uh, for this string. So this is how we use dp to optimize uh, automate uh, optimize our uh, computation of the automation. So this is this is what uh, this is what the com computing the automaton looks like, and uh, uh, example of how to use this in a DP problem uh, in problems part. Uh, uh, okay, do you have any doubt still here? Uh, any confusion or part you you didn't understand? Uh, okay, uh, I guess not. Uh, now, uh, yeah, so uh, this very useful, uh, not just for string based input for our text, it is also useful in uh, strings which have patterns. So, this is where they, uh, they discuss something called a gray string. So, see, see this string. So, uh, g of one is a, g of two is a, b, a, a, b, a, c, a, b, a, and basically insert a new character and put the previous string on both both parts. So this is called a gray string, and the prefix function for this, like, uh, see that prefix function for g of something very large cannot be calculated for, calculated because uh, this grows exponentially the size. However. Using using automaton, we can actually find recurrences uh, even in the even in the automaton calculation. So I, I will not dis not discuss this here because I, I I am not sure I'll be able to explain this well enough. Uh, so we might have a discussion session on this later if you want to. Uh, so this is uh, so it's useful not just in stream based input but in several other cases. And the example I will give later, uh, where it is useful, is is that uh, in DP, while calculating, uh, while calculating DP, I, I jumping to the next state can be very easy if I have the automaton uh, re ready. So uh, this is this was uh, everything for the teaching part. Now we'll do some problems. Uh, so. You have any? If you have any questions till now, then if you don't have any questions till now, we'll continue with the problem. So this is the problem. First problem. I'll send send you the link on the chat. Uh, give it a. Yeah, so basically, now I'll talk about the problem first. Uh, the problem says that I have to find the longest prefix that is also the suffix and that also occurs in the middle of the string. So, for example, in our in our in the first input. Fix prefix suffix. Uh, we, we can see that the largest uh, prefix that also that is the suffix and uh, occurs in the middle is fixed. So this is what uh, we want in uh, want uh, or we want to print whether the largest uh, suffix 
the the value of this string and uh, or print that nothing like that exists. So uh, any in, uh, we will we will discuss how to do this using both KMT and Z algorithm. Uh, so anyone has any initial ideas on how to do it using KMT set? Uh, in the second sample input, why the answer is not ABC? Uh, because ABC doesn't occur in the middle. So see that ABC occurs only at the beginning and at the end. It also must occur in the middle. So Okay, 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 okay. Like in, a string has fix, to be prefix, suffix, suffix, and and should occur in the middle also. Yeah, at okay. least once. So that's all. So like one, like you will feel that the problem is like half solved because what prefix function gives us is already that the longest string, which is the prefix and the suffix. Uh, but in the middle part is is a bit uh, tricky. But like it's not tricky, but uh, like how do how do you take care of that? Like you do, you don't need to change the algorithm to take care of that. I mean, how do you counter for that? Uh, I'll, I'll go ahead with the explanation. Uh, so, what would be a very simple way to do this? So, if I have, uh, if I have, uh, if I'm not bound by this o, o of n time, uh, suppose I am allowed O of n square. Uh, what would be a very, uh, what would be the very obvious way to do this? So uh, yeah, so uh, I'll I'll go ahead. LPS of n n minus one tells me the largest prefix that is the suffix of the uh, current string. So L. Oh, what I want to do is uh, I will check at every position whether this this string occurs again. So for all the positions which are after this, after this point, I I will check whether whether uh, suppose this value is x. Okay, so uh, I will check whether x occurs anywhere here be till before n minus one. So if it occurs anywhere here, it means that it occurs for the third time, and that's all we need. So I I can find I can look for x and see if uh, it occurs anywhere else. If it does, I am done. However, if it does not, that doesn't guarantee me that uh, I uh, that it, uh, like nothing smaller than that will not occur thrice. So what I do is I again do that thing where we reduce our expectation. So I do y equal to LPS of x minus one. What this allows me to do is that I, I get a smaller estimation of the string which could be common. So as I as I showed you like earlier, uh, I will get smaller uh, string which is the next small uh, which is also the suffix and the prefix. Uh, so this. So this allows me to uh, find find out uh, how uh, the next smallest thing, and now uh, I can again check for y. I can again check for how many times how many times y is occurs in this string, and if it's greater than three, I am I am done. Again, I can do this uh, to. I can keep doing this till I hit zero. So. This would be O of n square. Okay. So this is not the correct way to do it, obviously. So 
what i claim is i am missing something here so if i if i am doing this at this point like what i mean is i i don't need to do anything after this point i don't need to put the third case like any any guess guess is why Uh, basically, why I don't need to go here is because, uh, say, uh, I have y. Uh, y is my next next the length of my next smallest thing. So, uh, x is this is zero to x minus one, and y would be something here zero to y minus one. So, having a string here, which is common. Would mean that I also have this string and this string are are exactly the same. Uh, uh, ha having a string which uh, which is common to both prefix and suffix would also mean I have like this being present here also means that and it's also present here. so what i mean is i have overlooked the fact that y y being greater than 0 means it it occurs in at least four places i don't even need to worry about uh, going beyond so what i mean is uh, having uh, so what my code would simply do is that first i find the lps of n minus 1 if x is 0 i just say no it's it's not possible if x is not zero x is greater than zero then i i check for uh, x in in the uh, in the lps array and see how many times it occurs if it's greater than 3 uh, greater than equal to 3 then i'm done and i say uh, cool i found a substring of length x Uh, I found an of uh, a t of length x. Uh, otherwise, uh, if, if if x does not occur more than three times, then I find y, which is LPS of uh, x minus uh, one. If 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 my y is greater than zero, if if my y is equal to zero, then I can again say no, it doesn't occur. and if my y is greater than 0 then i know for sure that y occurs at least four times and i can straight away say that uh, my answer for uh, my answer is y like my sub length of my largest required answer is y and i just print 0 to y minus 1 so that is how we solve it using kmp using prefix array to be precise uh so any doubt till this point like did did you understand this uh yes i got this cool uh please feel free to stop me if you don't understand this uh uh yeah so how do we uh, now do the same thing using